less margin. And so typically, you know, it was for us as less a you know, the thing about competing with Seatrip about uh, then than sort of having having facilitating other people to compete. So where did most of your traffic go to? Did it go to Seatrip? Or did it go to these crappy little players? Well, more the latter. Yeah. I mean you get people who always go to Seatrip because of brand. Yeah. yeah. So explain to me why a company out of Scotland would come and buy a company in Shenzhen. How did that happen? Has anyone in this room used Skyscanner? Do you know Skyscanner? Sure. Do you like it? I've used it several times, and when I get to the actual price on the website, it's always different from the price on Skyscanner. <laughs> <laughs> Keep using it. They're baiting and switching with that. Yeah, that's Skyscanner too, yeah. It's not Skyscanner. Um, the price looks awesome. really good on Skyscanner. Click. So what happens there? Why does it always change? It's all about the challenge of real-time information, because getting that real-time information has a cost, right? And what a lot of OTAs, a lot of people who sell travel products, they don't want to incur that cost, so they'll give you a cashed price. It might be only cashed for five minutes, but that five minutes the price has changed, because there's, you know, it's, people are buying it all around the world. And so, so what Skyscanner did very well is they made a really good mobile experience, right? Everybody else made their mobile like the website was bloody awful. So is that what you did with your BB? China being China and people being on mobile? I think Alibaba, right? Yesterday, 48% of their $9.2 billion of trade was done on the mobile, right? So did you focus on mobile? Was that where you saw the market going? We were not the earliest movement to mobile. We developed our app. We had a mobile website quite early on, but um, and it wasn't... Um, it, it was a sort of m dot you know, vb dot com as opposed to uh, you know one of those that resizes automatically. Um, but responsive, responsive. That's what I said. For. Um, but we 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 developed our apps a couple of years ago uh, for both Android and, and iOS. And so you know, we have decent apps. I think um, those apps will, those apps will be more you know, part of what, what Skyscanner wanted. So okay. So how did you get on the radar? For Skyscanner, because they had a Chinese website already, right? They had Tianxun, well, Tianxun, yeah. So how did you get on their on their radar? Did you go to Scotland and vote for independence, or <laughs> <laughs> you were foreign? No, no, these things happen quite randomly. I met them. I met them at one of these um, conferences, a bit like the Eiffel Travel Conference, right. yeah. uh, but not that one. But I met them at, at a conference. They we started talking. I think. B2B partnership at first. They're like, oh, we could, we could we like domestic flights, and you know, if you give us those, it will give you some international flights that we have. And so we started talking along those lines, and then things just you know, moved in a different direction. So what happened? They, well, the pound's about to crash, so we'll pay you in Scottish <laughs> dollars. <laughs> no, so, so what happened? They bought you? They invested in you? What, what happened? They're not allowed to say. No, they required us in full. Okay. Why did they buy you? Because of the China footprint? I think they, they felt that while they started off and they, and they had a product in China, it wasn't a localized enough product. Yeah. Um, it didn't have, um, they didn't have developers in China. They didn't have stuff like facilitated booking and the kind of platform that we had for small agents Well, what's China. facilitated booking? So this is where you, you don't jump away. Oh, okay. It's yeah. the same place. So we had that. And we were doing that in China and they weren't doing that then. They wanted to do that. Um, and so, yeah, so technology and product and, and you know, and then localization. And when you do facilitate booking in China, is it all done through Alipay or do people pay in, in many other ways? I mean, how does it work? We support all the major platforms, so not just Drupal, um, Drupal, 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 Tencent Pay, okay. and a number of them. So yeah. you get bought by some Scots, and when? It happened this summer. Um, so did you celebrate? A little. A little. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I went on holiday. I went to the restaurant. So then what, 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 do, what do you have to do next? So do you become a, a brand? The OBB continues as a brand and you expand into Southeast Asia? Or you stay in China? We'll stay in China. So the deal is that we will run the China business of Skyscanner. Out of Shenzhen? Out of Shenzhen and Beijing, where they had an office. That's cool. And uh, the OBB brand will, will remain in place for now, but you know, I think I think they would like to have a unified global brand and so for us we're kind of if, if they ultimately choose to go in the direction that 
They want us to rebrand. So be it. But how many, many Western internet companies have gone into China and failed? Right? Big money, guys. How is guys going to do it differently apart from you, right? I mean, how they, uh, 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 what are they, <laughs> nice t-shirt, what are they going to do to, you know, crack China? Because many other internet companies from the West have not done it. I mean, you're not in a political space, right? Buying travel has got nothing to do with... I think it really helps. We're not in a political space like, like Google or Facebook. It's e-commerce, it's travel, the, the government is, is promoting travel. And so that helps. Um, and then they, I think they've seen with companies like eBay and, 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 and some others that you've got to be local, you've got to react quickly, you know, move fast on the ground, have local developers. You know, if you need to develop something new and, and have a release in a couple of months, you need to be able to do it, not be able to go back to head HQ and wait for a year. So I, I think that, that's their approach. So they give you the freedom to do stuff quickly, because eBay went into China. The reason they messed up was they all the decisions are made back in the States, right? So do you have freedom to do stuff here? Or in Shenzhen? They're, they're giving us a lot of autonomy. So excellent. So what is your plan in the next five years? You're going to boot. <laughs> <laughs> What's your exit strategy? As a banker would say. Well, as, as part of the transaction of uh, being acquired, as is normal, I, I am obliged, myself and the rest of the team are obliged to stay on and, and help Skyscanner build their business in Brighton, and, and we're happy with that. We were happy with that. That was part of the, We want to see, part of why we chose to go with them rather than a VC uh, was the fact that we felt we had a better chance of success, a better chance of our product being used by tens of millions of people in China rather than hundreds of thousands because they don't just give us money, they, they'll give us a lot of expertise, relationships with, you know, they've been doing it for more than 10 years with lots of airlines and, and other travel players. So, you, you, the China now is, you know, Chinese people are starting to travel overseas. Do you think the focus is overseas? Or do you think it's within China? I mean, if you're in the travel business, where would you, where should you spend your money? You're going to grow a brand, right? You've got a brand, still a baby brand, baby brand, so with an umbrella, which is very dodgy in Hong Kong. Well, <laughs> Well, how do you grow a brand? In, how are you going to grow it as a brand in China? Are you going to go nuts on social media? Are you going to... And how do you make it famous? We we'll spend some money. They, you know, they, they're giving us resources much more than we've ever had. So we'll spend some money. But I think we've got to, first and foremost, we've got to try and have a differentiated product. And the benefit of what Skyscanner brings is that they've got almost, in my mind, unparalleled international flight data. So out of 700 airlines worldwide, Skyscanner works with over 500 of them and has direct connections. But why do they do it so well? I don't understand. What, what have they got? Have they got some whiz kid programmer? What makes Skyscanner so good? Apart from the mobile experience. They started early and they How got... Was it? Thank you. <laughs> they started early and in Europe, you know, which was where a lot of the low cost airlines kind of grew up, they, the founder, Gareth Williams, he, he kind of was going to France every couple of weeks to visit, visit his brother, some obscure place. And he had to take these low-cost airlines, and there was no way you could compare low-cost airlines online. And so there wasn't a local version in Europe of uh, Bayak or Rocket? Not, not then. No? And so that, that's why he started it. And then you know, it's grown to be more than low-cost airlines. But to this day, have you tried doing a search for a flight to you know, some small town in Bangkok or something and you actually want to have all the main carriers and also the local uh, the low cost carriers and, and work out whether it's best to fly direct or connect in, in Bangkok or connect somewhere else. It's actually not it's a not not so they're all okay problem. for direct flights, right? In the UK it's cheapflights.co.uk or whatever, right? That, but in Asia it's still a bit you know, all over the place. Yeah, I think there's still a big problem to solve this, so it's 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 good. So do you think uh, travel is all about mobile? Will you ditch your website, just go mobile? Is, is there any point now having a website? I think there's still a point. I mean, um, I'll give you some numbers. I mean, I looked at, I checked this guy's what I'm about to say, but they, they, their mobile users have grown from about 20% a year ago to 35-ish percent now. That's so this, guy, this guy's kind of didn't start with mobile, he started his website. He started his website. Okay. But they've got 30 million app downloads, and so the trend is definitely there. But 30 million app downloads. How about your app? Oh, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands of downloads. Um, so, yeah, so they've got a lot of um, mobile users, and, and 
But the issue is that on mobile, the behavior is different and the conversion rates are different. That's the challenge. Give me some examples. So, you know, a lot of people will search on mobile and then they'll still, um, even, on, even on the iPad or whatever, they might be kind of browsing. But now at least, they might wait to go back to PC to actually complete the transaction. Because you go in for your credit card, you say. But, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to store all that stuff yeah. by with one click, but it's, it's still the behavior is different. So it's still back to PC, right? But it's moving. I mean, you know, more and more people, but the conversion rates are lower. So I also noticed Skyscanners going away from hotels to cars. So do you think if you're in the travel business, you have to do hotels, cars, restaurants, spas? You know, where, where does it go? Do you have to like embrace it all? No, I don't think so. I'd rather be seen, you know, like I'd rather be, be, be good at, at, at one or, or a few things than try to do it all. But um, different people have different approaches. I mean, if you, some people want to be, be the full mark, full suite, and others a niche. Excellent. All right, let's take some questions from the floor. Yeah. Good timing. <laughs> if you ask a really good question, you're going to give them. Uh, the next event, I could bring some stuff. But I don't have a Malcolm, you got any spare wallets? Uh, yes, got a couple of wallets. We can give one. Exactly. If you ask a really good question, Malcolm might give you a wallet. Oh, okay. That'd be a good question. That's stressful. Um, I, hi, uh, I'm Claire from Cotton Wolf, an integrated marketing uh, consultancy firm. Um, I have a question because um, you talk about 30 million, 30 million downloads on your um, apps. But I know that that's, that's focused, they have different focuses. That's flights and hotels and car rental. The three different apps, because I was trying to download. Um, which one were you talking about that has 30 million downloads? In total. And how, how are they, I mean, the products, are they fully, I mean, it's, it's a fully um, mobile way, but all the products availability and all that kind of stuff. It's an almost as good as the website. That's, that's are you talking about your VP or Skyscanner? Skyscanner. Sure. Um, thanks, Claire. I mean, I, I think to, to, to answer your questions, the Skyscanner apps are currently separate. They're separate apps for flights, hotels, car hire. The, the YoVV app is an integrated app. So you go into the app, you can get flights, hotels, car hire, and other stuff, all in one, which is more common in China. And part of the reason what we're doing is that we are moving towards that online approach. And that will happen with that Skyscanner as well. Um, in the not too distant future. Are you worried if you do that it becomes very bloated? A bit like fat wallets. Is that becoming very bloated? <laughs> um, a lot of people I see who make apps, they try and add so much that by the time you use it, it's like kind of you know walking through mud. It's a balance, isn't it? So you can go into you see one page and then you probably have to just one more click to say, I actually want flight or hotel. So that brings me on to the thought of how much data mining are you doing? Are you being clever about well, you know, if you like this hotel, then you're likely to like this car rental company and this airline. Is a, are you are you in the data mining game? Totally. So it's a big product for Skyscanner. They they sell that data to, you know, like how many people searched for flights from A to B last week. People buy that. that they buy that data. Yeah. And um and, and hotels want to know how many people searched for my competitor in this place, right? And and where were they when they searched and so on. So a lot of data mining, um, a lot of what we do as well is like, you know, which hotel, when you search for a hotel in a particular destination, do you put it, which hotels do you see first? That's really important, right? You know, but, but in China, they just, just like, well, whoever pays the most gets it, right? There's different approaches, but um, that, that will be a factor for almost any, anyone, not just in China. So, so this data part's quite interesting. So are you profiling people as they go through the journey of buying a hotel room or a, an, airline, a, an airline ticket? So historically, meta search engines haven't been, you haven't been required to uh, um, sort of register or log in to yeah. use them. Um, but more and more, we're trying to encourage people to do that so we will have more user data, right? So because if you want to do this, say, booking and have one-click payment with your credit cards, you're all preference. And, and do you connect into social media as well, so you start to have a profile of who these people are? Yeah, so that's a big initiative, what they call social social scan, and they're trying to basically, you know, through cookies and otherwise, targeting all the rest of it, get a better picture of, of, of the user. So you have a profile that you then sell? No, no, they're, they're very, very, very cognizant of um, data privacy, especially coming from the UK, because there's a lot yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, very there. much more restricted. The gentleman who laughed earlier. 
Hi, great talk. Matthew DeSantis from Bright Key. Uh, can you go back to your pre-acquisition revenue model a bit, please, and explain to me, uh, was there a charge to make the booking, you know, for finding the lowest fare? I mean, because obviously airlines stopped paying travel agency commissions, you know, five to ten years ago. It sounded to me like your entire revenue model was based on click advertising or, you know, is that correct? That, that you were solely making, there was no, no commission, no fee from the user, just the advertising was the revenue model for acquisition. Is that right? Not quite. Um, um, we, so CPC sort of referral uh, advertising was, was a point. You just see cost per click, right? No problem. Not cost, cost per click. So some people in this room might not know what it's done. Um, pay per click, cost per click, um, what Google or Baidu does was part of it. Um, cost per sort of booking or sale or per action was another part of it. A lot of the hotels would pay on that basis. Um, so you get a kickback from the hotel or the. Like any travel agent, when you yeah. buy a hotel, they pay 20% of it out the to, to someone else. Um, so, so that was. It's largely those two things. And we got to a certain level of, of, of user volume, we wanted to do a bit of display as well. Right. And then the, the B2B angle, again, our, our game plan was always to, when you had enough data to be able to sell that data as well. So, say for example, I mean, not to you know, take everyone else's time, but if I was Cafe, and I just, you know, I knew that I was running into a slow period, you would be able to sort of fill my seats through that cost per click advertising, you know, give Cafe seats priority in the search even though they weren't the lowest, you know, or... Exactly, so, so as you point out, travel is a unique uh, type of e-commerce. It, it's perishable, very perishable, yes. right? But it's also, it's a great form of e-commerce product because you don't have logistical issues. The customer actually goes and collects it himself when he shows up at the airport or the hotel. Right. You don't have to send it to him. But the, because it's so perishable, people want us, you know, the day before the flight, they've got empty seats, they'll sell those seats at uh, yeah, almost anything, right? On the Libra Nanti. And so that's part of it, paying for paying to, to make sure that they, they, they basically fill the seats. Good, thank you. But um, in the, there's been a lot of people who come to Web Wednesday and they're like the last minute guys, right? Like Hotel Tonight. Uh, are these guys not eating into the, the meta search guys? You know, you have one app that tells you, oh my god, I'm in Singapore, it's 12 midnight and I need a hotel. Are they, are they eating into your business or not really? Oh, they're so small, they're just kind of nibbling it. Yeah, my personal view of those guys is they're quite niche. They're, they'll be, there's market for that. Yeah. But not that many people book on the same day. They're, there's always a start, right? Yeah. And so what they're all, even the Hotel Tonight and others, they're essentially quietly brought out to be more generic OTAs. They just basically yeah. OTA, what does that stand for? Online travel agents. Okay. There was a question. We'll have one. Sorry, mate. Over here. Um, you mentioned earlier that you're still funded for your own time. So I'm just wondering that did you explore other another model like free marketing or uh, any sort like just um, and what was your experience like in Thailand? Well, revenue model we didn't really go much beyond what I've talked about so far. So well, we were definitely concerned about making money more. You know, I, I think we never had the mentality of we're just going to get millions and millions of users and then good stuff will happen. I think we, from the start, we, we thought we've got to have a way of making money. So we were that type of, uh, of, of internet. That's very different from Silicon Valley, right? It's yeah, so I mean, I personally, I think there's, everyone's got their own thing. I, I think there's, everyone sometimes, I get this cynical, everyone's like, I'm going to do this because I'm saving the world somehow. I think that a lot of times as an entrepreneur, you set a business, it's okay to admit that you're trying to make money. So, for me, at least. Um, but you, you know, so yeah, so we were definitely concerned about that. And uh, we, that's why we focused quite early on going out, trying to do sales, get contracts, and bring in some revenue. And that probably did help us survive a lot longer without external funding than we would have otherwise. Was it hard to collect money in China? Like, you might do a deal with somebody, a hotel, but would they pay you? We never had major uh, bad debt. Very right. this year. Oh, nice one. So, a question over here. So, I used to live in China and also now I'm. You still do, mate. Uh, Hong Kong. Ask a Hong Konger. Anyway, uh, 
A lot of times, it's cheaper to fly to Shenzhen than it is to fly to Hong Kong, especially if you're doing something like going to Kunming or uh, uh, Sichuan Bana, uh, Shangri La. Does your engine actually work and give an agony cost of flying out of Hong Kong versus flying out of Shenzhen? Are you going to some place like uh, Zhuhai? And Zhuhai uh, can be 19 hours to fly on some days or one hour to fly on other days. Yeah, I mean, we, we didn't go down that route. I mean, I think there's a US medicine for hit monk that has Agony is one of their metrics, and they've used it for that for a lot of their PR. Um, but how do you measure agony? Yeah, exactly. So it's is a, it like how smelly the person is next to you? All the time, it's about <laughs> perceived amount of time that it would take you to get from A to B, door to door. So do you take averages and say, you know, this plane usually Shanghai Hong Kong delayed by five hours on a Friday afternoon, so don't fly on a Friday afternoon? That could be a factor. I think the gentleman over there is referring to that. If you live in Hong Kong, versus flying Hong Kong to Kunming versus traveling from Hong Kong to Shenzhen Airport by Kunming. The additional time doing the latter, but less at, at a lower price, is that worth it? You just need a version of your app or your website for backpackers, right? It's $90, who cares? So a good question. You've got very straight arm this thing, you should ask it. Hello, this is Nancy. So I have a question because earlier you mentioned that so those customers who book from UBB is actually the customers of the airlines or hotels. But as an agency or platform as UBB, what customer service do you provide after user booked or spent money? So because airlines they are more standardized, so people have expectation of, of like what services I will have. Do you work for an airline? No, I don't. But my question is more focused on the, uh, for example, hotels or local tours because it's more fragmented and it's, it's more difficult to control the quality. So. It, it's, it's a very good question. I mean, I think for us as a platform, the basic starting point is that a big advantage is we don't have to do much of any customer service. Um, so if you are selling the product yourself, if you're a C-Trip or an Expedia or you're the actual supplier of your hotel or airline, the customer expects you to, if, you want to can, if they want to cancel, you have to deal with it. If, if they've got you know, a question, they expect you to answer it. But as a platform, as a sort of a Taobao, as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a platform essentially, people just come, they, what they come to you more for is that like, they realize you're just aggregating other people selling, and they're buying from other people, if they've got a problem, they need to change anything, they'll go directly to the seller, right? And what your job is as a platform is to, to your point, to, to curate, to make sure you aggregate good quality and reliable sellers um, of, of, of those products and, and not people who will, you know, be fraudulent or not provide the appropriate level of customer service. Answer your question? No, she was not. That was a no face. Yeah. I think the more difficult part is what you just said. How, how do you uh, make sure the quality of those uh, products? Well, we get complaints. We get complaints from users, and um, the complaints we have to first, the first thing we have to say is that rightly or wrong, I mean that we have to explain to the user that it wasn't us who sold you that product, right? It was that person. But we're going to help you deal with that. And so we do have to do a certain level of that. And if we get enough complaints, we'll kick off that that person, that seller from off that. That's a good point because I noticed Alibaba with AliTrip, they've put a, a fund of 100 million RMB or some ridiculous amount of money to like deal with people getting ripped off and things like that. Do you have like a, a slush fund for, for you know, dodgy sellers? We, we didn't at Yobibi, but um, at Skyscan, I think, I think there's, there's a slush fund for dodgy sellers. Something they're looking at. Okay. One more question. Do I see that? There you go. Maybe you already mentioned that before. What's your, like, I guess, operational risk as a platform? Uh, from my understanding, you, you look like, for example, a stock exchange, and uh, you provide some marketplace for other sellers and the buyers to match their needs. So, what kind of risk, that, operational risk that you have? For example, for stock exchange, they always face a legal issue, so operational risk. What, what, what about She's a banker, and that was a very good question. What's the risk? I'd say we're not exactly like a stock exchange in that. We're more, slightly more one way. So we list 
products at prices that sellers are willing to sell them at. We don't take bids from on the demand side. Um, you take it or leave it, basically. I mean, some some other platforms have bid type models, but I don't know, but we didn't. We don't. So, um, but there are operational issues. There's consumer protection laws. There's data security uh, laws, particularly when when you take people's credit card information. You have to encrypt it, you have to have multi-level authentication if people have a different service. There's a, a whole host of operational issues. Um, when, when somebody, as I was saying before, in response to the previous question, uh, the consumer often doesn't realize you're a platform. To them it's all the same, right? They're just like, oh, I bought my flight via your, by you. So I got a problem, you, you better help me. Um, I have to warn you that I've used Last Minute in the UK. Last Minute originally was doing what you were doing, kind of. But now you book for a flight by last minute. And then, as soon as something goes wrong, they're like, it's not our problem. Like, look at the terms and conditions. It's not our problem. We will take our 70 pounds, thank you very much. It's not our problem. Talk to the airline. Talk to the hotel. So is that not a bit bad, like, reputation-wise, long-term? Because you're, you're a middleman, right? And a middleman has a role. But if, you, if people start saying, well, these guys, they never, you know, I don't trust the quality of their product. It's a spectrum. I mean, so if you call Google, if you if you search something in Google and you found it and then you bought it, would you call Google or would you call the? Uh, I would if I use Google Wallet. I think traditionally meta search has seen it ourselves as search. We're much more towards Google than towards the actual retailer. But actually, it's a gray area. We're sort of somewhere in between. Yeah. yeah. So the last question I have is: How much are you plugging into the whole social thing, the WeChat? Because China is very advanced in this, right? I mean, how much are you using the fact that people are spending all their time on WeChat, uh, you know, hanging out with friends, checking in when they travel overseas? Is, is that not an area you should be in? I mean, if you look at WeChat, there's so much kind of commerce happening in WeChat through Tenpei and the whole thing. Is that not the space that you should be in? We're definitely, you know, we've got, at the OBB, we have already uh, developed a, a platform on or WeChat, where where you could you could go you know uh, register with our WeChat account and search for flights and, and then even buy them with WeChat wallet. So we, we, as part of Sky Scan, we're definitely going to use that more. It's it's huge. So people were buying through Yobi using WeChat, that yeah. or, or Ten Pays. There are, there are issues. Bar, there are right? issues because flights and hotels can be quite expensive, relatively speaking. So they've got limits on the yeah five thousand So but. But it's definitely, we're moving in that direction. I mean, just to tell you an anecdote, a colleague of mine from Beijing, everyone gets sent to Edinburgh for sort of induction when they start. And, uh, from Beijing to Edinburgh? Yeah, so we hired someone, and then we sent her to, to Edinburgh for two weeks. And she came back, and I was like, how was it? And she was like, oh, it was so boring, and it's such a small place. And then she was like, but I managed to find someone to take me around. So I said, how do you find? that person, and she kind of did Yao Yao yeah, yeah, well, on, on the WeChat, and then there were like all these Chinese students, like, you know, studying in Edinburgh, and, and she, one of them just said, yeah, I'll, I'll come take you around. So wouldn't that be great, though, to find your, you know, a, a hotel or something by shaking WeChat? No? <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, thank you very much. A round of applause for our good Thank you. Good job, Thank you. So, we're now going to have uh, a lucky draw. So you've been a very good audience. Thank you for being so patient. We're going to have a lucky draw. Where's Malcolm? He's still here, man. Do you, can he draw one of the ones for you? Stephen, come here. You had the pleasure of, can he do a t-shirt? Brody, where are you? Brody, 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 there you are. <laughs> so, we're going to give you a t-shirt and what? T-shirt. A t-shirt and a wallet, is that okay? Yeah, t-shirt and, t-shirt and a wallet goes to... The wrong roll. She hosts you. Wow. Sounds like a communication. Yay! <laughs> Malcolm, uh, maybe you can give him a t-shirt later. Yeah. Uh, you can get one of those. Photo, photo, photo. Nice. No, he's going to do the next one. Okay. Okay. Alright, so the second prize is a t-shirt and a wallet. Oh yeah, t-shirt and wallet. Second prize. 
Malcolm, come and do it, man. Where's the new guy? Very old fashioned. Awesome, don't look, don't look, stop cheating. And the winner is? Too small. Too small. Too small. My colleague, I don't know. Someone from Detroit.